Hey, I'm gonna clear up this mess you made with this Mexican. I need to beat Marissa Lara first. I need to do his dirty work, and then we'll get it on. potential to come back for Billy Joe Saunders so we ran over there in getting things started in a potential comeback but also started off Lee's camp over there so it was good most of the lads come over training away and while we was over there or just as we got back the lads started picking up dates so uh, yeah overall I would say it's a success For Billy Joe, it's just about him getting back training, enjoying boxing, falling back in love with the sport, and um, dropping a bit of weight. So, like I say, we, overall, I would say it's a success. I mean, there's no 100% certainty on on anything at the moment, but uh, you know, he's 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 doing the right things at the right time and making the right moves for that that uh, comeback to 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 happen if if he so chooses. <laughs> We're out here in Fuerte Ventura. I like coming here because the people, the hospitality, the accommodation. I know everybody on the island, and it's sort of becoming a second home, to be honest with you. I mean, I'm six weeks into a long, long trail, long comeback. I've done a bit of weight in six weeks. I've done a majority of the weight. I say majority, probably just under half. But it's, listen, it's. it's it's tough, it's hard. One more day every day, that's the way I look at it. One more day every day, one more day every day. Keep pushing, keep grinding. Nothing good comes easy. And, um, you know, I've been out the ring now two years, so it's all getting me awareness back, me shots back. You know, starting, not fresh, but, you know, trying to pick up from where I left off. It's not easy, is it? Two years out the ring. But I'm enjoying it. You know, the full team's been out here. All the lads have done well. Um, you know, you've got Aloy, Shabazz, um, you got Lee Wood. Uh, you got you just got all the lads out. You got the other Lee. You got all you got everybody out. It was pushing and driving on, you know, pushing everything on. And it's nice to have that sort of youth around you doing that. You know, I'm 30, 33 now, so that youth of pushing you on them runs, them extra bag circuits, them extra, you know, it's everything. And and you can't really you can't really pick. A better team to be around, to be honest. Everyone's got a good work ethic. You know, they're very calculated, they're very professional. And it's nice It's nice just to be back in the game, to be honest with you. Nice just to be a little bit getting out and doing my training and living life and seeing a little bit, to be honest. I think when I come back, I want the fans to obviously be happy with my last remaining fights. Look, let's say I've got four or five fights left. I want the fans to more or less pick who they want me to fight. And, and you know, I would like to be a free weight world champion, so I'm just waiting for the right opportunity and good things come to those who wait and you know my boxing ability speaks for itself, you know fucking, I'm one of them, I haven't got a lot of miles on the clock, I'm fresh, as soon as I get fit and get in shape I'm ready for any super middleweight they put in front of me so you know I sort of put the bit back between my teeth really because it's been two years since my last fight with Canelo and you know, I just had a bit. I just needed to get away from boxing for a while. Even before that fight, I felt like I needed just a, a break from boxing. But you know, you don't actually miss it until 
you're looking at yourself and you're fucking out of shape and you're not you're not motivated and then all of a sudden you know you can feel it coming back and one day it just comes back and you think do you know what i'm out of here i'm doing what i do best so they'll be looking i'll be looking to be adding some different stuff to my boxing this time around um some new tricks to the game i'll be bringing not listen not gonna be killing myself and you know trying something i've never tried but comfortable stuff that i know i can bring into my game that will suit and will help in the big fights especially the fights that i'm going to be have remaining left so it'd be a bit of excitement and hopefully december the fans will see it i felt like when i was boxing my last fight against canelo it wasn't like uh it was like is this really it so what i learned is that i can absolutely mix it with anybody like there ain't nobody who i should be worried about feared of or or anything like that because i know i can mix it with, with absolutely anyone and i was confident going into the fight but look at this at elite level boxing you know nothing's a hundred percent so that's another thing i learned because every fight you're going in you're going to win you're going to win you're going to win you're going to win you got to take you got to take a proper game plan in and, and, and a proper constructual plan moving forward to fights like that and that's something that I, I don't think I had there but you know moving forward there's still some big fights out there to showcase my skills and put showcase my skills and put some stuff right and uh, get back to winning ways and and give the fans the best fight that I can possibly give them not you know look I'm not saying I'm gonna fight King Kong first fight back but once I have my first fight back after that I don't care it's the fans can decide who, who I fight because really I owe it back to the fans. You know, I'm I don't need to get out in box. I'm financially very secure. I'm you know I'm I'm very much I've I've got a good family. I've got my kids. Like I couldn't really ask for much more. But it's just something I want to do. And when I get something in my head, I've got to, you know I couldn't rest going letting it go another year or two and then it being too late. So that's that one. Support me. At Saunders Billy Joe on um, Instagram, my Twitter, you keep watching and you know I'm thinking about doing one of these OnlyFans, you know what I mean, where I've been fat, losing the weight and I'll show you all how to do it sharp. God bless you all. We started off Lee's training camp over there. Obviously we had the press conference in between that, which was a success. The fight being announced, which has had huge attention. Ticket sales have gone fantastic. I don't think there's many tickets left. It's two, two huge names, two football clubs in mutual territory and two two-time champions of the world. So it's a huge fight and um, it was good to get Lee started over there. He's been going to Fort Ventura for I think over 10 years. So he's familiar with it. He loves it over there. So it was, it was good, you know, we got in some good work. Really happy with, with this, where we got to and the progress that we made before coming back. It was extremely satisfying to get that win back over Lara because Lee's been on, been on such a good run. Um, you know, we did choose Lara collectively as an opponent. And I think when you watch the fight, the first fight, you can see why, you know, Lee was dominating, which made it a little bit harder, harder of a pill to swallow when, when Lee did get, get dropped and the fight got ended. But, um, you know, to, to go back, work on things, and put it right in such quick fashion and in such clinical fashion. You know, I'm, uh, I was over the moon with that. I was over the moon with that for Lee. And, uh, you know, two top, it's great to become a, a world champion, but to become a two-time world champion is even greater. So, yeah, um, you know, over the moon. And it, I think it just sums up who Lee is, you know. Uh, adversity, all of these kind of things that he's seen throughout his career, he's not let a defeat define him. And I think it, that's that's an inspiration for some of the next generation coming through as well. Getting the revenge on Laura was um, extremely satisfying, and becoming a two-time world champion in the process um, it was satisfying because of how many people doubted me. I guess um, how people, well, what was what the people were saying. You know, it was too fast, faster turnaround. Um, I was going to get knocked out again. Um, 
and some of them some of them were like professional pundits who was um, writing me off as well and saying similar things um, and that's that's what made it so satisfying Wood versus Warrington is massive two fighters that have got huge fan bases I'm a huge fan of both guys I think that they are the type of guys that young fighters want to look up to because there's lots of fighters that will look out there and probably claim to have more talent, whatever talent is, than the pair of them. But it's not about that, you know. They're, they're, they've got something that not many people have got. They've got a certain type of character within them that's allowed them to, to get to places that talent can't take you. And uh, so I'm obviously a mad thing to say, but I'm a huge fan of the pair of them. One guy I train, one guy's the opponent. But that's just the truth, you know. I've got so much respect for the pair of them. You know, it's, it, it, I just can't see it being anything but a fight of the year contender as well when, when the two clash. There is a lot of respect between the two teams. I think they're two very, very decent guys, got a lot of respect for each other, um, understand what each other has been through, understand what it takes to get to where the two of them have got. Um, and you know, I, I, I really get, they've actually um, shown Joshy's dad has, has helped us out with sparring. He's come down here and helped us out with sparring before, not with Josh, but with Maxi Hughes. Um, and we was preparing for a, for a fight with, with another one of our fighters that we were working with. And, um, you know, last time we, we had a, a Leewood box, a guy from, from their camp before as well. And, and uh, we was in the bubble at the time during COVID. So we spent a lot of time around each other as well. And a great atmosphere, great people. Um, and, and, and that's how boxing should be, you know. Res a lot of respect shown, but obviously when, when the two of them get in the ring, um, business has got to be handled. The way I see the fight going is I think that, I think that both fighters will be a little bit cautious to start off with. I think that Josh will not want to take any silly chances early knowing that Lee's a, a very, very, very heavy-handed guy. A lot of fighters struggle with the atmosphere and the pressure and the, you know, the crowd and all the rest of it. However, these are two, and it's rare to have two guys that both thrive off of that, thrive off of the atmosphere. And that is one of the reasons why I can't see it being anything but an absolute barnstormer. I think once it catches fire, it's just gonna be absolute madness. And I think that it's important that both fighters are sensible and don't get too carried away. I think that Lee will have to be careful not to get too carried away, um, ending up in unnecessary exchanges. And I think it's important that Josh doesn't take silly risks in, in potentially walking into something that, that can end the fight. So they'll have to control their emotions, but I really do. I just think they're two guys that, that thrive off the atmosphere. And I think once it once the fight uh, catches fire, I just I can just see it. The, the fans constantly pouring petrol on it and it just get bigger and bigger. My prediction is Leewood via knockout. I think that there's a lot of talk at the minute about Josh Warrington. He's past his heyday. I don't believe any of that. I think that Josh is a phenomenal fighter. I think that it's an extremely tough fight, as they all are at this level. But I think there's a lot of people sleeping on Josh Warrington and we're certainly not doing that. Um, but I just think style-wise, I think that um, the volume that Josh brings, I think that, you know, it's, it's, it's uh, when you come up against a puncher with that style, as we saw similar, different style in the sense of how they deliver it, but Lara's a devastating puncher, Lee's a devastating puncher, and, uh, you know, for, for, for Josh to try and match that volume that he likes to bring against someone like Lee, I think it just leaves him vulnerable, and I, I can see Lee would get in the stoppage. It feels, it feels good to be a two-time world champion. Um, not many get the chance to do that. So um, it's another box ticked along the way with many more things to be ticked. Um, hopefully next up, get the win over Warrington, which has been a, an extremely long time coming for myself. And then hopefully it will be well fingers cross touch wood, <laughs> cross everything. I get my city ground fight. Nottingham V leads. You know, he's got massive support. I've got massive support. Um, I think part and parcel of having that massive support is because our both fight, we're both exciting fighters, we both leave it all on the line. Um, you know, we both got a lot of heart, we dig deep, literally we give everything on fight night. Um, and that's why it's, it's built to be already fight of the year and it's, and it's never even happened yet. Um, so yeah, I'm ex extremely excited, it's going to be um, an incredible atmosphere. I believe the fans will be battling all night, um, constant noise, um, can't wait.
I think there's a lot of mutual respect between me and Josh. I don't think we are the type of fighters that will trash talk and try to get in fighters' heads and um, try and just boost our profile by saying things um, to get clicks and, and likes, you know. We're not them kind of fighters. We, 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 we're kind of fighters that um, have got a reputation from fighting, not from the things you do outside the ring. And I think that's, um, that's the most important thing for me as a fighter um, to be known for. You know, I don't really like predicting fights. I feel that um, I just got to go in there and do what I do, train as hard as I train as I always do. And um, if I stick to the plan, what's been set out for me by Lee and Ben and my team, um, it could be an early night for him. It could, it could be an early night, but he's tough. Um, let's take into account um, Josh extremely tough. And this is his last chance saloon, you know, so he's got to win this fight. So he's going to give everything. But, um, like I said, I don't like to predict fights, but there's going to be times in this fight when he's taking big shots and um, it's pretty much down to him uh, how the fight finishes. like this, this it's, it's what you're in the game for you got to almost try and stay emotionless out of it you know you care and you spend so much time on, on going over the details and watching fights and watching the opponent and going over training and going over sparring and trying to make sure that you've covered every area um, and that you guy fully understands what you're asking him to do I think that when you when you miss things in preparation and preparation isn't going well that's what creates that nerves etc i think other than that when you prepare well i think you're just excited obviously of course everybody gets nerves and it's those nerves and that little bit of pressure that makes you perform when you feel like you've got somebody watching over your shoulder that you know if you slip up they're going to make you pay and this is that type of fight you know both guys haven't got the luxury of if i don't turn up at my best both guys have to turn up at their best otherwise it's not going to be enough that's what make brings out the best in people that, that type of pressure, knowing that, right, if, if I get an hour extra, extra studying today, you know, that, that's an hour that they haven't got in. That's what brings out the best in people, and um, that's where the difference gets made, in my opinion.